My final basic checkmate is um, the worst nightmare for a lot of players. Bishop and knight versus king. Basically because they don't take the trouble to learn it. Uh, I've seen even advanced players mess this up. They don't know the winning technique because, um, well, it's a gap in their chess education. But I'm going to teach it to you now. I think it's important. It will teach you a lot about how to coordinate your pieces. Bishop and knight do separate jobs on the chessboard. How best do they work together? Well, we're going to see how they work together now. And the victim is going to be the black king. Now, if it was black to move in this position, of course, the king wouldn't be a victim at all because the position is stalemate. So it follows that, from white's point of view, the black king is in the wrong corner. White wants the opposing king in a corner which is the same colour as his bishop. So basically, he wants to drive black all the way to a8 or h1 in this position. And um, it's a question of how this is done. Well, it's done using the same systematic method as before. Let's start off with knight f7, king g8, and now importantly, white surrenders a tempo with bishop e4. He basically forces black to play king f8. The king is now walking in the wrong direction from black's point of view. And white now, asked to, and now has to ask himself, where don't I want the black king to go on the next turn? Well, it's pretty clear he doesn't want him to come back to g8, which is heading towards the wrong corner again. So bishop h7 is the right move. And now you can see already, after three accurate moves, the black king is being driven across the board towards the uh, desired corner on a8. All right, now there's a tricky bit coming up. Knight e5. And black plays his king to d8. Well, he could have gone to f8 in this position. But then white makes progress after knight d7. King e8. King e6. King d8. King d6, king e8, and now bishop g6 check. We'll encounter a similar position to this in the game, but um, at any rate, you can see white is making considerable progress towards driving the black king towards the right colour corner. Now, in the game, going back to knight e5, black tried to make a run for it with king d8. White plays king e6, and now king c7. And at this stage, the beginner throws up his hands in horror and says, Oh my god, I've let his king out. Well, that's not true, and uh, white can set up a barrier in this position by putting his knight on the same colour square as the bishop, confining the black king. The idea is that the knight on light squares confines the black king, controlling all the dark squares, and the bishop on d3 again stops the king on c6 from escaping. We call this a barrier. Um, the white pieces are three squares apart, and the black king must go backwards. Now it's a question of, again, cutting the king off. So bishop e4. Now the black king is being increasingly denied squares. He goes back to d8. And now after king d6, we reach a very similar position to the one we were just looking at in the other variation. King goes to e8. Bishop to g6. Again, note the white pieces on the same colour squares, complementing each other. King d8. And now bishop h5. Again, surrendering a tempo in order to drive the black king to where we want him to go. Now comes the familiar knight manoeuvre. Knight c5, king d8, knight b7, king c8, and now king c6. And as you can see, the black king would love to go to d8 in this position. Unfortunately for him, he can't. So he's got to go to b8, which is precisely where he doesn't want to go. Alright, on with the show. Bishop g4, king a7. And now, this is a move weaker players have difficulty with, king c7. Because again, it seems as though the black king is being let out of the trap. But after bishop e2 check, for the third time in this endgame, white has coordinated his pieces perfectly. The knight is complementing the bishop on the same colour square, controlling all black squares. The bishop's controlling white. The king must go back to a7. And for the final time, the knight manoeuvre drives the king into the corner. And now, the final loss of a tempo. King a7, knight c8 check, king a8, and now bishop c6 checkmate. When you see that done for the first time over the board, you think it's magic. But it's not magic, it's systematic. And I think if you don't understand it right away, you should perhaps go over this segment several times. Because it will teach you a lot about how pieces work together.